Hello and thank you for tuning in. In this video I'll be showing you how to install a GPX file into the Garmin ERA 660 GPS receiver. This is my Garmin ERA 660 Aviation GPS which normally lives in the plane but today it's here in the workshop so I can install some user waypoints. As their name suggests user waypoints are ones which we users can define ourselves. If there's some random location on a chart that you want to be able to use for navigation or flight planning User waypoints are just a thing. So this is a pretty long video and in the interest of brevity I'm going to go through the really bare bones procedure for installing the GPX file on the receiver first. It takes about 30 seconds and for the more tech savvy of you out there that'll probably be good enough. If not, stick around for the rest of the video and I'll go into a lot more detail and that should do as well. So here we go with the short procedure first. Grab a micro SD flash the standard FAT32 formatting is all you need. Copy the GPX file onto the flash from the computer of your choice. Plug the flash into the slot on the Garmin ERA 660. Power that GPS receiver up and the points are loaded automatically and there they'll stay. If you want to see the more long-winded and detailed version of that whole process, stick around and we'll get started. Here we go. Here's the 44th edition of the Vancouver VTA chart, and this chart contains 117 VFR checkpoints. These checkpoints are scattered all over the chart, but they're consolidated into this list, and you can see there's a bunch of rows there. I'm only showing the top part of the list. And then there are four columns. The first column is a plain text name. Column number two is a five or six character abbreviation. Column number three is a latitude. And column number four is the longitude. And together, these four columns uniquely identify each of the VFR checkpoints. Okay, so we have the GPX file here holding on Taxiway Alpha at YVR. And uh, I'll just take you on a quick tour of what's inside it. It's a bare bones file. It works. Uh, GPX is the type. And it's just repeating one entry after another. It looks just like this. It's got a latitude, a longitude, there's the plain text name active in this case, and then in the description section is the five character abbreviation. And it's long, as I said, it goes all the way down, 117 entries, with the last one being white rock. So that's what the file looks like. Now let's put it onto the flash chip. Okay, so the flash chip's installed. You can see it's a two gigabyte SD flash that I'm using here and for this uh, purpose I found FAT32 works just fine. Uh, the biggest flash chip I've got at the moment is a 2 gigabyte chip so I don't know if, uh, if this will work with larger ones but it certainly works fine with this one. And of course you just need enough space on the flash to hold the, uh, the file and this is a very small file. So first thing I'm going to do is create a folder here and call it Garmin. And uh, I found this works with or without this file. Uh, if you just put the GPX file in the root directory, the GPS receiver will find it. But I've seen uh, online demonstrations where it's in a Garmin file as well. So I'm going to follow that, that procedure. Now we just put the file into the Garmin folder. And that's all there is to it. And there it is. Once again, there's the content. So now we're good to take this flash chip and install it into the ERA 660 and uh, it should load the GPX file into it and we're done. So before we get started we'll just check quickly to make sure there are no user waypoints installed in the receiver. And to do that you hit the tools menu on the bottom right and then the user waypoints and here it says no user waypoints so we're good to go. So we get the flash chip, take it out of the adapter and there's a slot here on the side of the GPS receiver you can see it. You put the flash in there and then just leave it for a couple of seconds. So let's make sure they got installed tools, user waypoints, and there's the list. Uh, here, let's pick one, Cloverdale, get the waypoint information, and here we have the abbreviated name and above the plain text name, Cloverdale, and then down below the bearing and heading to the checkpoint. Now that the points are in the database, you can navigate to them by hitting the Direct To button and then Activate, and the GPS will guide you to that location. 
You can also see these waypoints on the map. Hit the map view, you have to zoom in a little bit, and those little silver squares with the plain text name above them are the waypoints we've just installed. If you compare these waypoints you're seeing on this map with uh, the same ones on the VTA chart, they should line up exactly assuming I typed in those uh, latitude and longitude coordinates without making any mistakes. So I'm going to turn the GPS receiver off now and then pull the flash chip out to demonstrate that the chip doesn't have to stay in there for those points to remain. Those points are installed in the internal memory of the GPS receiver. So we'll power it up again. Okay, it's booted up, so we'll navigate to the user waypoints menu, tools, user waypoints, and you can see they're all still there even though the chip's not plugged in. If for any reason uh, these waypoints become obsolete or you just don't want to have them on the GPS receiver anymore, it's a simple question of going to the tools menu, the user waypoints menu, and then over to this menu button on the far right, hit that, and then hit delete all, and then it asks you want to delete them all, yep I do. Delete all flight plan waypoints as well, yep, get rid of those, and they're all gone. Right, well that's all I've got for you today in this video. I hope you enjoyed learning something about installing user waypoints into a Garmin ARA 660 GPS. If you've got any questions about anything you've heard or seen in the video, please put them in the comments below. And uh, thank you for watching. As always, have a nice day. We'll catch you next time. Bye.